Hey, what's going on guys? Mad Scientist here. So today, as promised, pack review video. We're going to get into that in a minute. Um, I want to talk about intros real quick. So I know I've been driving you guys crazy. I keep changing the intro like every video, but I haven't really settled on an intro that I like. So I'll make one and I like it when I make it. And then, you know, as with anything, once you sit down and think about it for two or three days, you're like, you know what? I really don't like that intro. So I know I'm like OCD slash ADHD slash all the D's above. So um, I made a new intro again. Um, I'm going to debut it in this video. Um, let me know what you guys think. Throw it down in the comments below whether you like it. Uh, hop on over to the Facebook page. I'll link that down below. Um, I'm throwing all the intros up once I get done with them. And there's going to be a poll. So you guys can say, yep, I like this one. Yeah, I hate this one. Um, you should have stuck with the original. Hey, just leave your comments. Let me know what you guys think. So, um, yeah, last thing, the hat. I know you guys are thinking, hey, mad scientist, it's May. You're in Texas. It's like 100 degrees outside. Why are you wearing that hat? Well... As you guys know, I'm moving, so I was cleaning out. This is like my favorite hat. And I finally found it. It's been missing for like a year and a half. So I'm going to wear it for this video because I'm obviously not going to wear it out camping next month because it's going to be too hot. But anyway, so new intro coming up. Let me know what you guys think. Alright, so guys, let's talk about the pack for a bit. Um, this is a Chilo Gear. Uh, that's the vendor name. So Chilo Gear is actually a cottage vendor out of Portland, Oregon. Um, they make all the cat all their packs custom ordered. So once you order it, they actually make it and then ship it to you. Um, the only downside on this is that sometimes the uh, wait for it could be like six weeks, seven weeks. Um, I've read some people waited up to like three months. It just depends on how many uh, packs they have in the queue that they make. So I think it's like a little small, tiny, one-room place out in Portland, Oregon. So um, they are boutique. Uh, some of their stuff is pretty high-end. Um, they're also strictly alpine packs. So this is a mountaineering pack specifically. So it doesn't have all the frills and the doodads like you'd find on a normal backpacking backpack. So if you're looking specifically for a backpacking pack, um, I would not recommend going to Chilo Gear. Again, their primary focus is mountaineering slash alpine packs, not actual... Um, backpacking packs. Um, they do make a ton of different types of packs. They make the woven, non-woven Dyneema, which we'll talk about today. And this one, the, those are the expensive ones. This one is a $700 pack. Um, and then, but they do make normal, um, like eat, like more budget friendly packs um, that are different, different material. Um, still, they're robust. I mean, they're great packs. Um, I want to say this same one in the normal fabric is like 289 bucks, but I'll put a link to the webpage below if you're interested in looking at some of their packs. Um, they make all different kinds of sizes, 30 liter, 45 liters, 60 liters, 75. I mean, just go on the website and check them out. Um, again, this is a boutique vendor, so it's all really high-end stuff and it's all great stuff. Um, so if you look on the website, you'll find a lot of good reviews about Chilo Gear. You'll also find some negatives, but you know, each their own. Um, there are some pros and cons that we'll get into on this pack specifically, some things that I don't like. Um, some things that other people don't like, stuff like that. So, all right, we're going to talk about the pack again. I'm going to start from the inside and work our way out. Um, what I'll do is I'll actually stuff the inside. I brought some stuff with me to stuff on the inside when we actually start talking about the outside so you can see it a little bit better. So, all right, um, let's talk about the specs real quick before I get into actually looking at the pack. So, again, this is a woven, non-woven Dyneema. Um, it's a pretty robust fabric. It's really thick but surprisingly quite light. Um, that's the reason I wanted this one specifically. The uh, weight, I think, off of the website is 3.8 .8 pounds with everything included. Um, you can strip the stuff down. That's why I like the Chilo Gear Packs. They're very versatile. They're very modular. Um, you don't have to have everything on it, so you can take stuff off. Um, so I've been able to whittle this one down to right around 44 ounces. Um, so that's not too bad. It's right around maybe 2.8 pounds, something like that. So uh, And that's just taking some stuff off that I don't normally use. Um, so yeah, so woven, bleh, try saying that real quick, woven, non-woven Dyneema. Yeah, say, say that really fast, like 1,800 times. Bet you won't. Um, so yeah, woven, non-woven Dyneema is the fabric type. Um, we've gone over the weight. So yeah, let's talk about the actual pack. Let's take a look inside. So let me spin this around real quick. Um, like any Alpine pack, it's a single chamber. So it stuffs all the way in and out. 
Um, no frills, so you, you're not going to have any pockets on the outside. Um, you know, like mesh areas, stuff like that. That's what separates an Alpine pack from a backpacking pack. Everything's meant to be on the inside. So, you know, when you're up above the tree line, you know, weather's freezing. If you got a water bottle hanging on the outside, by the time you get to camp, it's going to be frozen solid. Trust me. I was that guy once. Um, so, you, so, you know, Alpine packs are meant for everything to be on the inside. So, again, if you're looking for a strict backpacking pack, then you want all the pockets and stuff like that, you're not going to get that on this pack. All right? It's a mountaineering pack specifically. Now, I wanted a pack that I could do primarily for mountaineering and also use for backpacking. So there are some accessories on Chill Gear's website that you can buy. You can buy little wand pockets that do fit um, a Nalgene bottle. Um, you can also purchase a shovel pouch that goes on the outside. I'm actually looking at buying one of those um, that you can stuff stuff down in. You know, it's like an outside pocket. But again, you know, mountaineering packs, everything's designed to be on the inside. So you're, you know, you're not gonna get those pockets. So again, you know, look, look at an actual backpacking designed backpack and if you want those kind of things. So, um, inside. Again, one chamber volume on this is 45 liters, as is. It does come with the extended collar, as you can see, um, which extends it out to about 75 liters. Uh, you can also compress it totally down, as small as it'll go, and that's 22 liters. Or you can do it in like a summit pack configuration, and that's around 32 liters. So again, keywords here: versatile, modular. I mean, you can just—you can see there's four different types of, uh, of volumes in different configurations on one single pack. So it's amazing. Um, I found that even backpacking, I'll fully pack out to 75. You know, I'll go and I'll set up camp, and if I'm gonna do some scrambling, I just turn it into the summit pack configuration. You know, some water, you know, like rain jacket, you know, something small like that, and then. You know, I'm off one pack to do it all so it's kind of cool so yeah so on the inside um, the frame itself they have a removable frame sheet and a bivy pad so the frame sheet is this piece right here of its plastic kind of fiberboard on my it's plastic but um, and it comes with a a uh, aluminum stay so that's a piece of aluminum right in here and what you're supposed to do with this is as you can see it's kind of bent like this um, you actually take this thing and you set it up to your back, right? And you actually form fit this to your back. So if you're looking for a pack that allows airflow through your back, this is also not the best pack for you. That's one of the cons I'll talk about. But again, you know, I understand it's a mountaineering pack, so I'm not, I'm not going to get that airflow through there. Um, and also, in the same pocket, there's a closed cell foam pad. Um, it's the bivy pad. It's just real thin, you know, maybe about... I'd say a quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit more, not yet to a half an inch. Um, so yeah, the cool thing about this is that, you know, if, you, if you're in camp or, you know, you're on, you're on a, a bivy or something like that, you can actually use this to, to supplement. Now, it's not, as you can see, it's not big enough to actually sleep on. But what I use this for is like a sit pad um, after I've made camp for the night or I use it for like a foot area on, on my hammock. So I have a three-quarter inch uh, air mattress, so obviously it doesn't extend the whole way. So I use that. I use this in the hammock when it's cold, put it underneath my feet. Or if I'm in a tent uh, on the side of a mountain, then I can put this down at my feet area as well, since the three-quarter doesn't cover it all, and I'm golden. So yeah, it's not bad. You know, just standard closed cell foam, nothing, nothing too fancy. Um, there is a pocket on the inside that holds it off. I'll try to spin this so you guys can see it. Um, it's just a second little pocket area right here, and that's where the frame sheet and the baby pad go. Uh, they also put this little pocket in here. It's kind of cool. Um, just a little zipper pocket. Nothing, you know, nothing too fancy, but it's nice because I can put my, uh, like my wallet, money, credit card, stuff like that in here. And then it also comes with a little clip. So you know, I, I take my keys and I clip it, and it just hangs right in there. So you know, nothing, nothing too fancy, but it's great to have everything kind of on the inside, you know, out of the way. Um, this also doubles as the top cover for the pocket for the frame sheet and the bivy. So as you can see, we got Velcro here. And then there's a huge Velcro piece on the pocket right in here. So you take the frame sheet and the pad and you shove it down in here. So and it slides right in like that. And then you take the, uh, the bivy pad, slide that down in there, just like so. And you just fold that up over the top and press it down on the Velcro and boom, you're done. Everything's in. So that's pretty cool, you know. At, when you're in camp, you're not going to need any of this stuff in here, so um, that's, that's why they made it removable. It's kind of nice. There's also a 
compression strap on the inside. Um, it comes off the top right here. I don't know if you can see it that well. Um, but then there's another clip right up here. And then what you can actually do is use this to cinch down your load on the inside of the pack. So that's kind of cool as well. Um, just, just little, you know, just little things. That's, that's why I like this pack so much. It's, it's modular and versatile. Yes, it's simple. So I think the simplicity is, is what I really like about it. For both. Yeah, here it is. So this is the actual um, stock hip belt strap that comes with the pack. Um, it does have some loops on here. It's got like a little loop here. You can throw a carabiner in, hang some ice screws and stuff like that off of. Um, as you can see, it's just double padded foam in here. And it's real thin, you know, for, for me. Now this works great when I'm climbing. However, if I'm doing like long distance backpacking and stuff like that, then this, I, I switch it out for this. But just plain and simple. Um, again, mountaineering pack. So just keep that in mind. You know, if you're looking, if, if you're looking, if you're watching this review and you're thinking backpacking pack mode, you're not going to get a lot of this stuff. So, um, but this is not to say that this pack is not a decent backpacking pack. And when I purchased it, especially for the money, um, I wanted something that I could use for both backpacking and climbing. And in the past four years that I've owned this pack, as you can see, I beat it up pretty good. It's gone off of a cliff accidentally, um, you know, thrown in the back of the truck, rocks, granite, wine, I mean, you name it. it. It's been all, I've scraped it against, you know, trees, bushes, rock faces, everything, and it's still going strong. Um, that's the cool thing I like the woven, non woven Dyneema, the, just the burliness of it. Um, it's, it's almost bomb proof. Now, not to say that, you know, you, you know, something sharp like a crampon or like the pig part of an ice axe won't go through this with enough wear and tear. You know, nothing's totally 100% bomb proof. But if you, you know, if you're careful when you strap stuff down to the outside, you should, yeah, I mean, you shouldn't have that problem. So, you know, with crampons, I actually have a uh, crampon pouch that I can strap onto here on the outside just to put my crampons in so they don't poke holes and everything. So, and then I'll, when we talk about the outside, I'll show you the ice axe area. But that's it. I mean, the, the inside is pretty simple. Um, and yeah, so let's talk shoulder straps real quick. Um, we already kind of went over the hip belt. Now the hip belt is removable. So it's kind of nice. So if I'm doing like a summit pack configuration, I can just totally pull the hip belt off and just go. So it saves you a little bit more weight as well. Um, shoulder straps, again, it's that same kind of double padded foam in here. Um, this, is, this is one of my huge negative parts about this pack. Um, and as you can see, I've, I've done a remedy for these and I'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, the foam, it's, it's not really padded enough for, for me personally. Um, and it, it moves around in here. So it, it kind of slides to one side and it bunches up in here. And, and that really drove me nuts for about a year. So what I did is on, uh, I went on z -Pack's website and I actually ordered these little shoulder strap pads. Uh, I think they were like 30 bucks for a pair. So it just adds a little bit more cushion on the, on the shoulders. I tested these out last October in the Limbo Gorge and it made a world of difference, especially for backpacking. And, and I've left them on there for, you know, some alpine climbing and it's just, it's a world of difference, especially without the hip belt. You know, it's just a little extra padding. And, you know, sometimes I'm not wearing the, the puffy. You know, I might just have like a soft shell with uh, um, a fleece on underneath. And, you, you know, with, with some stuff, it was like summit pack configuration. But it's just a little bit more comfort for me. Um, you know, if you're, if you're counting ounces, I mean, obviously you don't want to add ounces. But I've found that this is like a necessary, you know, thing for me personally for just, just comfort reasons. But, uh... Yep, and then there's also a little padding down here in the back, kind of under where the hip belt slides through, so that's kind of nice. Um, again, this really fits right up against your back, so you're not really going to get that much airflow through there. So, like summer, I found, you know, summer hiking, my back is really hot. Um, so, I mean, but again, this is, you know, a, a mountaineering pack that I also use for backpacking. So, you know, some people will be like, eh, no, I'm not going to do that. Um, I've found myself leaning more towards as I'm doing more and more backpacking, actually picking up a, uh, a regular backpack, just specifically for backpacking. Um, because like on the outside, you know, you don't have the little like pockets down here to slide like a water bottle. Um, I really don't care much for external pockets. Um, but one thing I do miss, and, and I've seen it on some packs, I've been researching the ULA equipment packs. Um, what I've seen, they're amazing packs. Um, 
And you know, I just kind of like the water bottle pockets down here where you can just kind of stuff stuff and then like the mesh pocket area so I can stuff like, you know, stuff I want to dry out on the trail. But, uh, but yeah, so um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stuff some stuff in here. Um, I brought along some, some extra gear. I'm just gonna stuff it in here, kind of fill it out. And then um, I'll go over the stuff on the outside. All right, so I just stuffed my uh, down sleeping bag and some, some jackets in here just to kind of fill it out a little bit um, so we can talk about the outside. So like we were talking about earlier with versatility and modularity, one of the big things I like about this pack is the strap system. Um, it's, it's a totally modular strap system, as you can see, and I'll lift it up here. Um, it's got all these little strap points on it. Um, you got you know, one set here, one set here. You got a hook down there, you got a hook up here. Um, one, two, three, four on each side. Um, I've actually used the straps, and I'll explain these to you in a minute. And then you got some back here on the back. So these are all meant for kind of more strap modularity. So you can kind of configure the pack how you want it with your straps. Uh, the entire strap set itself weighs seven ounces if you're counting ounces at home. Um, so I have kind of narrowed it down to the, the straps that I actually need. So I use the compression straps on the side and then I use a dual strap system across the top. Um, this is mainly just because sometimes I carry rope if I'm out doing climbing. And then I can just kind of throw the rope up here and then route it down through the compression straps on the side, kind of form it to the pack. But uh, you can also use this configuration with a single strap across the top. Um, and as you can see, and this is another negative, this, this material up here, I would have liked to seen the whole pack, you know, to continue the woven, non, woven Dyneema fabric across the whole, you know, top uh, collar area. But um, it is waterproof. I bunched it up. I've kind of done the roll you know, kind of roll it up and then fold it in and then put the straps over the top. Um, the pack does come with a lid. I have it right here. So if you, if you want to use the lid, um, it, uses the, uh, it, it uses the strap system to hook in. So if you want to extend it out, you got to use the strap system. Or if you're using the Summit Pack configuration, you can just use this little thing and you hook it to this D-ring right here. And you can just flap it over and then have a, uh, have a top for it. Um, the lid is just a single single opening, um, single chamber, and then there is a zip area underneath with another little thing, but that's it. Um, this is seven ounces, so if you take that off, you're good if you're counting ounces at home. Another seven ounce, or correct, five ounces. That's five ounces off. So, um, yeah, so let's talk about the straps real quick. Um, I'm gonna try to do this so you can see it. Now the straps, they're kinda cool, and I'm gonna use this blue one so you can see better, but it all uses the same system. Um, one second here. So as you can see here on this strap specifically, um, you have a little slide buckle that's right here. It slides up and down and then like a little D-ring that's sewn in on the end. Um, so as you can see all over the pack, it's those same things. These little buckles and this D-ring. So what you do is you always match a D-ring to a buckle. So you can just slide the D-ring over the buckle like so. And then I take the buckle and slide it into the D-ring down here and hook it in and then Boom, compression. So again, it allows for you know four compression areas. Um, I picked you know these three specifically just to compress down, you know, but with sleeping bag, you know, heavier gear right here, and then the lighter gear up here. So um, now they have these compression style straps. There's two styles. So they have these compression style straps and then the clip style, which is what's found up here on the top. It's the same concept. Um, you just you know, again, I've, I've hooked two into here just because that's, that's, the, uh, that's the way I wanted to do it. But uh, it's just that same D-ring buckle system, but then with, the, clip, with the, uh, the standard clips like so. And then I put one on the back and then one on this side, and then that way I can just tighten down both ways. So the, the strap system is very modular. Um, you can take them off, you can put them on. Um, you can use them. Some people don't like them. I personally do like them. I think it's great you know, to be able to kind of put the compression straps where I want them um, versus having them fixed. But, you know, there's some people out there that prefer fixed ones. Hey, you know what? Tomato, tomato. We, in the end, you still have straps. This is my personal opinion, though. So, um, yeah. Now, there are two ice axe attachments on the back here. So we got one for this side right here. This is where they hook in. And then the straps for them. So it's, it's really simple. Um, got, yep, it's right here. So I got an ice axe. So all you do is you slide it in through here. 
and then take this buckle strap and just tighten that down. And then you use this little system right here. So all this is is a shot cord and you just loop that through, pull it tight and tighten it down. Boom, done. So that's how you attach an ice axe. So you can do the same thing on the other side and slide one through. So as you can see on these smaller ones, one of the things I do like is that the, the pick, the sharp point in the pick is, is uh, hidden. So it's, it's not poking stuff. If I had, you know, like, if I'm taking the pack off and I accidentally rub the back across like one of my jackets or something, I would hate to tear up one of my down jackets. But uh, I haven't had any issues with that. So um, maybe on some of the longer ice axes, but if you're really worried about it, they do make protective coverings for those. So that would probably, you know, help out a lot but uh, I just haven't ever bought one not a big deal so yeah and then Chile gear also makes a bunch of accessories so you can actually purchase a crampon pouch that goes right here that hooks into these um, so yeah but you know very simple it's just just a very simple pack um, one of the other cons on the outside and I found out that I had to do was uh, seam seal the seams as you can see maybe I don't know in the, maybe the soft box light will, will show it out but I had to seam seal all the seams around here um, I personally feel like for 700 bucks I shouldn't have to do that but again you know yeah so that's the pack that's about all I can think of again I mean there's not much to talk about because it's a pretty simple pack um, you know just re chill here replace this fabric I mean this stuff it's flimsy I don't know. That, that's probably the big thing along with the, the shoulder straps I can think of. So, yeah. Anyway, that's the pack. Um, check out the upcoming video for the Limbo Gorge. You will see this pack in action. Um, so if you want to see that, hit subscribe down below. That way you're going to be notified when I post the uh, video. If you're interested in any more videos like this, just let me know. Put it in the comments below. I'll, you know, I'll make some more outdoor videos. Um, hopefully, i got to pack up the studio in two days. Um, I'm moving, if you haven't seen my earlier video, so I'm finally leaving Texas, so I'm, I'm going to get closer to some mountains, which would be nice, but uh, I'm moving, so i got to break down the studio, so I'm going to try to get one more video out, and that's going to be kind of the, the loadout that I'm going to be carrying. If I don't make it here, um, as soon as I get back to North Carolina on vacation, I will try to shoot that video and get that posted up for you guys. So again... Hit like down below. I'm going to post the link to Chila Gear's website down below if you're interested in some of these packs. Um, and yeah, so I appreciate you watching this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.